Village Green English. Everyday British English, British English every day. You're listening to the Curiosity Contest. I am Nathan, and with me is Tom. We are English teachers and the two founders of Village Green English. Every week, we are recording a podcast to find out which word of the week is better. I will argue for my word of the week, and likewise, Tom will argue for his word of the week. Ultimately, this is a matter of opinion, and the winner will be decided by your vote in the poll. V rules. So, Tom, what are the rules? Well, Nathan, I'm glad you are. <laughs> Every week, we choose a word pertaining to a topic which will be the subject of contentious debate in the podcast. The reward, a spot in the Virtual Village Museum of Lexical Curiosity. A thing must be chosen in relation to the word to symbolise the word and its journey through common language. The words and their representative artefacts will then be put forward to the community to cast their vote on their chosen victor. Nathan, how are you? (laughs) I'm well, Tom. I am enjoying life in the village. How are you? And where are you? Awesome. Well, I'm also well. I'm enjoying life in uh, the beautiful Italian town of Lecce. Um, you might notice the reverb. There's some very high ceilings mm. uh, in this town. All the uh, all the buildings here are this old stone, beautiful old stone buildings with very high ceilings. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't tend to get a lovely... new stone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think the most. Stuff. <laughs> I think most stone was uh, formed like a good few million years ago. Um, and... yeah. How was your geology? <laughs> Mine is rusty. Mine is uh, rocky. Rocky. Of... <laughs> <laughs> rocky at best. Um... <laughs> but I think that we should uh, we should jump into talking about our words for the week. My word of the week. I am a curry lover. (laughs) Curry is one of my favorite things to eat. Um, And it's also a um, a very important British cultural phenomenon. Mm. Again, you know, we don't shy away from our colonial past in Britain. I think we Uh, are, we have mixed feelings. Beautiful, but go on. It is. It is. You know, we have mixed feelings about it. You know, we don't revel in it by any means. Uh, we are ap- ap- we're apologetic, I think, in general about it. But it mm. has had a huge impact on our culture. Oh, absolutely. And I think probably nowhere is that more evident than in our food. It's hard for me to gauge a consensus, but we definitely are very proud of our sort of mixed heritage exactly exactly and that's where you know you know i i guess <clears throat> the indian influence on british food originates in colonial in colonialism but i think it um it really where it really comes from is immigration there are lots mm, of yeah. um people from india and bangladesh uh, especially who have uh, moved to britain and um, with them, they bring their culinary culture. And due to the multiculturalism of Britain, our kind of accepting nature, which isn't always prevalent, but it is there always, our accepting nature is to gobble up <laughs> all these different traditions and cultures, and especially food. You know, we take it, we might change it, we might get it wrong, <laughs> but we love it. And we take it and we run with it. And we create a national icon, which is curry. Yes, and and a typical British, Eng- well, a typical British curry. What is that? Well, because I, the the mm-hmm. I'll tell you now, the cuisine in India is very different to what we have here. So exactly. Exactly. And that's, again, what makes this phenomenon so interesting, is that this is genuinely a very British thing, because it, it's 
not really how they eat food in, in India. You know, it's not as prevalent. It's not the way that we do it. Hmm. Well, our Indian food, and it's the same with our Chinese food, or um, yeah, you know, lots of other Southeast Asian food cultures that we have or in Britain. Italian, for that matter. Yeah, exactly. Very famously Italian. Carbonara is a very, you know, it's a very interesting dish. It's a very famous Italian dish and comes to Britain. Most people who cook carbonara make something completely different. <laughs> um, but it still has value, right? It still has value. It's just a different way of doing it. Um, but it's not carbonara. I, you know, yeah, that's, well, that's very important to note. <laughs> I, I suppose that's more the thing of like when you export a recipe and maybe there's not the access to the the traditions and knowledge and the ingredients, you know, that, that would accompany the recipe. So I think that's where exactly. that comes from. Brits, you know, absolutely uh, sabotaging Italian food. But in terms of British, like Indian cuisine, I think it's something a bit different. Could you elaborate? Um, yeah, I do think it's a bit different. That leads me very nicely onto my artifact for this week. My artifact. The first ever chicken tikka masala. So chicken tikka masala is a dish consisting of roasted marinated chicken chunks, which we call <laughs> chicken tikka, which we'll get onto in a moment, in a spiced curry sauce. The curry is usually creamy and orange or red colored. This dish was popularized by cooks from the Indian subcontinent living in Great Britain. And it is now served in restaurants all around the world. It's always, it's always tricky. I've always found this with, with language lessons or, or, you know, watching shows or listening to stuff. I all, I can't help it. I just start to salivate. I, I start to feel <laughs> that urge to eat something. So I've got drinks with me, but I don't know if that's going to suffice. <laughs> Keep going on. Keep. Oh, it's music to my exactly ears. What it's you music mean. to my ears. I, I do it all the time. I uh, you know I love watching cooking shows on TV. I, we have some some really amazing ones in Britain, and um, it's always in the morning. Um, if I've woken up late and missed breakfast, or <laughs> does I, that happen often, you know, Tom? Yeah, fairly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, after about 10 minutes of watching, I have to go to the kitchen and uh, whip something up because um, it is it is pretty hard. So why did I pick chicken tikka masala? Well, I think that this artifact really exemplifies the, the whole phenomenon around British food culture and the import of foreign food and foreign culture into the UK. So chicken tikka masala was invented, well, it was invented in Britain. We're not entirely sure where. Some people say Glasgow. Uh, I've read mm. Birmingham before. Mm. 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 Um, some people say London. But I think what is generally um, held to be true mm. is that it was invented by um, probably a Bangladeshi uh, chef mm -hmm. um, in a... Um, in a restaurant in the UK, probably Glasgow. So chicken tikka masala is probably the most famous um, curry in the world. And um, it's interesting that this phenomenon is not actually from India, but it is inspired by India. So something that exemplifies this, uh, the importance of chicken tikka masala to the average British family is that when I was a kid, I remember when we had an Indian takeaway, the options were yellow or red. Yellow being chicken korma and red being chicken tikka masala. And, and to six-year-old me, that was the menu. Mm. And now adult Tom is once purple, pink, magenta, cyan. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're usually different shades of sort of yellow or brown. <laughs> You know, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's something that I, I really would like to try is the um, kind of not necessarily fusion, but the Indian oat cuisine. So I would love oh, to go right. to a really, really fancy restaurant and try some really innovative Indian inspired um, 
cuisine yeah. that's you know done in a very modern way you're a very innovative cook yourself so i don't see why you couldn't do that with <laughs> follow half the recipe and you know go adventuring in the kitchen yeah you know what maybe maybe that's a good idea maybe i should try something again i you know put some recipes i've seen out. a lot of <laughs> yeah i will do do my best my word of the week my word is thread this word i i enjoy a lot because of its um multi multiple meanings mm -hmm. um but basically it's come up from prepping lessons one uh, a lesson on english identity which is very much looking at big threaded pieces of art in which ah. a group of people have come together to you know create this this amazing amazingly intricate and, and delicate piece of art um but we'll come back to that um the one that i like to teach on just by the way is called um grayson perry's comfort blanket and he surveyed uh, a group of people well, a, a large group of people at the time just opened up to the public and said can you just send in things that you consider very british so all over this 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 he basically designed it as a five pound note with the queen in the middle but sewn into every nook and cranny of this big um this big fabric you know wall, wall hanging is many many cultural identifiers little keywords terms um like salt and pepper the pub um things like oh famous figures like winston churchill alan turing so on and so forth but it's it's honestly an incredible piece of art it, it currently hangs in a gallery in sheffield just above the library so that's where I first came across this this piece of art and honestly it's something that really took me back and made me even to this day I like to reflect on it and and yeah I like to use it as a teaching tool you know to explore British culture and, and associated um, uh, things um, the other thing is I'm prepping a lesson later on upcycling so this idea of, of taking something that's you know, it's been pre-loved, pre-used, um, deciding to repurpose it and, 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 you know, find more, what's the word, more use for something rather than just, you know, throwing it away. To, to give something a new lease of life. Yes, perhaps. yes, exactly. My artifact. I wonder if you could actually guess my artifact. If the uh, if if my word of the week is is thread, and, and well, to give you a hint. Yeah. So your word of the week is thread, and you did mention before something about a tapestry. So, based on that, my guess is that your artifact is the Bayou tapestry. Bayou. Um, Bayou. And that's where you'd be incorrect. So I, ah. I've subtly guided you down a garden path down, down the wrong wrong line of, of invocation because i was going to pick that as my artifact tom but the more i learn uh, about the tapestry um there's something quite quite amazing about it um did you know this tom the bio tapestry is really an embroidery is it it's not a tapestry at all so a, why don't they call it the bayou because embroidery. obviously tom a tapestry is something that's woven on a loom whereas ah. an embroidery is thread stitched onto a cloth background i see so in in the case of the bayou tapestry you have a sort of sort of a blank linen uh -huh. you know quite a simple cloth they have I a lot of it yeah exactly so 70 meters and something like I don't know, even know how many panels, but it's, you know, it's like an epic. Mm, it is. 
my artifact is the final panel of the Hastings embroidery. <laughs> of course it is. Are you aware of this object? Uh, no, I'm not. Tell me about it. Really? Um, yeah, so basically it was uh, threaded, it was stitched by the Needlework Society in um, 1966. So um, 900 years after um, William the Conqueror became king and established a long line of, of uh, unified or, or what's the word, sort of the monarchy as we know it today. Yeah. Um, you know, that pivotal date. So again, it's like a huge nod to the Bayeux tapestry. Um, mm -hmm. But this one, they, they correctly called it the embroidery. Um, they picked out sort of the biggest events as they saw fit for 900 years since 1066. And I'm going to share that with you now. So. That's great. Right. What can you see? I can see the crown jewels. Mm. So I imagine in person, this would be absolutely glistening the threads of gold and silver and the rubies and again even just the cushion and you can make out a very velvety fabric as well yeah i just think it's interesting how they picked this as the final panel because it sort That's of comes full circle right mm. it sort of brings us back to william the conqueror because you know the next person to be you know crowned has such a weight of history mm. so that's that's just def definitely a very interesting thing about british history is is a nearly continuous monarchy interrupted only once yeah yeah well that's all we have time for this week thanks for listening please do follow the link to the website where you can vote for the winner of this week's curiosity contest you can also find extra materials for this episode and a whole lot more. On the website, you will be able to sign up for lessons with me or Nathan, and that includes small group classes, private tuition, and our courses. Also, join the Discord community for topical discussions, games, and social events. Village Green English. Everyday British English. British English every day. <laughs>